Friday morning here on uh, KCMO Talk Radio, 95.7 FM. Of course, a a good Friday as well. Um, Happy to welcome on and say hi to Kansas Attorney General uh, Chris Kobach, who announced yesterday he is leading several states in a lawsuit against the Biden administration over their latest attempt to bail out student loans. Uh, Chris, good morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, this lawsuit, take take us through it for those who might have missed it, and, of course, the purpose of it. Happy to. Good morning. So uh, yesterday we filed suit in federal district court in Kansas on behalf of the state of Kansas and 10 other states. Um, it is – but to understand it fully, you need to know the background, and that is uh, in 2022 – Uh, President Biden attempted to basically cancel or forgive student loans to the tune of $430 billion total, and six states, of which Kansas was one, uh, sued. And that case went all the way to the Supreme Court in the summer of 2023, and the Supreme Court struck it down and said, the law doesn't allow you to do this, President Biden. And uh, furthermore, this is a a question reserved to Congress. Congress could do it, but not you. Anyway, fast forward to the present. The Biden administration, instead of following the Supreme Court's order, said, well, we're just going to do it a different way, uh, but, but essentially the same way. Uh, the, the president even boasted uh, about a month and a half ago, quote, the Supreme Court blocked it, but that didn't stop me, end quote. And so the new loan forgiveness plan is slightly smaller than the old one, but it's just as illegal. It, it, it twists federal law to find some plausible way that maybe the law allows us, which it doesn't. And uh, they're moving forward to, to give you a quick summary in, in, in uh, layman's terms of what their claim is. Uh, the first time the Biden administration tried this move, they did so by claiming they were merely, quote, modifying the loan. The word modify appears in federal law. But the Supreme Court said, no, you're not modifying it. You're, you're canceling the loans. Well, this time they're coming back and saying, OK, we are simply changing the terms of loan repayment, which the law allows. But, Pete, when you and I ask for a change in the terms of loan repayment with the bank, we know exactly what that means. It means maybe it goes from a five to a 10 year loan or the rate of interest has changed, but we still have to pay back the principal. And the Biden administration is, of course, forgiving the principal. The majority of loans will go to zero uh, under this new plan. Yeah, and it's a uh, six billion dollar plan. So th- this does it stop, oh, it, it, right? Six billion? Me, it, it's a bit. Oh, no, it's much bigger. Uh, so it's already by their own admission, they've, they're rolling it out, too. So they started doing this months ago. They've already forgiven a $150 billion, and they haven't given us the full size. They haven't actually calculated what the scope of this is going to be. So it's, it's $150 billion and counting. We think it's going to be well over $200 billion. Uh, it's, it's immense. Wow. Okay. But I, I thought I saw late last week that it was the latest round was maybe the latest round was $6 billion, but Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. But every week we get a new we get a new number and, and it keeps increasing by the billions. So week. have they forgiven these or are they just saying they're going to forgive these? And this thing is now being hung up in court. Thanks to you. They are they are actually sending letters to people saying yeah. your loan is forgiven. Uh, so they are trying to forgive them right now. We will be seeking an injunction in court because, you know, it, it, it may be wonderful news for the person who uh, got, you know, took out that student loan that all of a sudden you get a letter from the government. But that money doesn't come out of thin air. That money is paid for by the rest of us. Uh, it forces taxpayers who didn't go to college, uh, taxpayers who worked their way through college to pay for, co- pay for their tuition. It, it forces all of those people who acted responsibly to pay off the student loan of someone who maybe racked up a huge amount of debt or went on to graduate school, which a lot of these cases are. Uh, and it also transfers wealth from the people who are on average less have less income to people who on average have more income. It feels to me like a vote buying scheme ahead of November. Do you feel that way? Uh, I, 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 I do. Uh, I, I can't say for certain. It could be purely coincidence that the first loan forgiveness plan was rolled out in the 2022 election cycle. And look, we have this new one in the 2024 election cycle. And President Biden has been talking about it and boasting about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but but no, I don't think it's a mere coincidence. OK, Chris Kobach is on KCMO Talk Radio. So uh, you've got a bunch of states on board with this lawsuit um, with you. So what what now? Like what what is the legal process that it goes through? Could it get to the Supreme Court? What's a timeline on that? What does all that look like? So uh, the, the next step is uh, we will be asking the court for a preliminary injunction uh, and then the court will either grant it or deny it. 
whichever way that goes, probably the losing party will appeal it to the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals, um, and the case would undoubtedly be expedited there. And then it could take one of two different paths. If the Tenth Circuit agrees that a preliminary injunction is appropriate, then it might end there because the U.S. Supreme Court has already ruled on this question and, you know, essentially the same question. And they may say, okay, we will let whatever the Tenth Circuit ruling is stand. If, however, it goes the other way, then the Tenth Circuit may take, sorry, then the Supreme Court might take the case on what's called its emergency docket where it looks at preliminary injunctions. Okay. All right. So we're going to wait to see how that plays out. Um, Chris Kobach, Kansas Attorney General, is on KCMO. He is leading the way on this uh, lawsuit against the Biden administration challenging their uh, student loan repayment plan. So this is one of those things where, for those of us who look at it and say, well, the Supreme Court decided on this, they are just now reinterpreting what they're doing, right? That's, that's the crux of what they've done now. They're reinterpreting what they're actually doing here. Uh, I think that's even a charitable way, way to describe it. <laughs> they're trying. They're, basically, they're trying to come up with another pretext. Well, yes, yes. All along, <laughs> all along the, all along the Biden administration just wants to give away student loan money. In other words, you know, there was forgive loans and, and in effect, give these uh, loan holders a, or, or borrowers, I should should say, a massive grant. And they're just trying to find another pretext. The, the statute, the, the way the, the justification they're offering this time is even weaker than the first one. Otherwise, they would have tried this the first time. Mm -hmm. But at least they're dressing it up in slightly different clothing and saying, oh, no, no, we're not completely defying the Supreme Court, but they are defying the court. And and really, if you think about that, the Supreme Court issues a ruling. The ruling clearly uh, covers this new loan forgiveness plan, too. Uh, But but President Biden is doing it anyway. I mean, not really since the Civil War era has our country seen a president defying the Supreme Court in this matter. I think the closest we come to it is maybe right after Brown versus Board of Education, where some places you know, were trying to, to resist desegregating schools. But, but this one is more direct because the Supreme Court ruled against this president and this Department of Education and said, no, you can't do it. And then they're moving ahead anyway. Yeah, that's uh, exactly right. They're Dylan Mulvaneying it, if I may make that into a uh, <laughs> way to put it here. So how can you sure. take off the legal hat, put on the uh, political hat for a second? How would Chris Kobach solve what is a higher education crisis when you talk about these student loans, the cost of higher education? We all know it's out of control. Something needs to be done. Of course, the people in charge are taking uh, the completely wrong approach. But for the next minute or so, how would you how would you solve this thing um, in terms of the cost and the way that, you know, the debt is destroying younger generations well and I'll, I'll say this not as the attorney general but as a, as a father i've got uh four girls one in college one about to go off to college and we're scraping together money to try to figure out how we're going to pay for all of this and my girls are working to, to save their own money the one in college is working through college in addition to the money that her mom and dad we've saved for her so we're trying to do it the responsible way so we see this you know personally but to your question I think there's several factors that work here. One is that college prices have been going up at a skyrocketing rate since the really in the last 30 years, 35 years, Mm -hmm. and way faster than inflation. Uh, As someone who was once a law professor, I think something you were seeing across the nation is that administrations, the the university administrations are just blossoming, you know, they're getting immense and paying huge salaries. And the number of professors isn't really significantly changing. So I think the universities are inflating their costs and they're bringing on unnecessary, massive administration layers. Uh, I think that probably has to change. Now, how you force them to do that, I'm not sure. The other thing is things like the student loan forgiveness plan. If you do this, this will add inflationary pressure uh, into tuition prices because everyone will assume, oh, loans get loans get forgiven. So they're, it's basically a gift from the federal government. That allows the universities to jack up tuition even more. Oh, don't worry. You'll get one of these loans that's forgiven. So we have to stop things like this right now. But I think a deeper issue is why the universities keep raising tuition. Yeah, and that's something that is uh, going to take time to figure out. But Chris Kobach leading the way on at least stopping you know, other people's tax dollars. And as you noted, too, more middle class folks going to bail out people with master's degrees. It's just, you know, morally wrong as well. And um, we'll keep tabs on this, and we appreciate you leading the way on it, Chris Kobach. My pleasure. All right. That is uh, the Kansas Attorney General. Great to have him on KCMO.